Hi, I'm teacher Im and I create videos to help my students score better in their STBM Maths D paper and I hope my videos can be helpful for you too. Well, today we are going to talk about solving problem model by differential equation. But before I start, let's hit the subscribe button so that you will be notified whenever I have a video out. It is free, why not? Shall we go to the videos? From my previous online class, the free online class, every Saturday, 5 p.m., I've already talked about a few uh, things which is important about this type of question. Firstly, you have to read the question at least twice. After you have read the question, it is very important to track out what's the clue, okay, to think what's the clue given and what is it used for. Then, of course, you have to set in what type of integration you need to do to solve the question. And when you look get a question which is so long like this, the equation, different equation are given to you, then you should be lucky, okay, because it is given. Sometimes this question, they don't give you the equation. So you have to remember all the properties and all the rules given uh, in uh, the, your lessons, which can help you create a new formula. But for this equation, uh, question, the differential equation are given to you. And if the story is so long, it is advisable to read the, the question at least twice. Okay, just give it a fast track. Okay, for example, one of the rules, blah, 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 you can read it through. Okay, and sometimes like this type of question, the information might be helpful or it just might be a story to make the question longer. Okay, so you have to be very careful when reading it and try to highlight whatever information which is important for you. Right, let's get into the question. Now, once we already uh, identify which differential equation, sometimes they were mentioned inside the question, differential equation, sometimes they might not. So if they do mention the differential equation, then that's great. If not, you have to determine which one is the differential equation. Once you get the question, the next thing that you need to do is look at the differential equation that they give, dx over dt. So you know already all your x should be on the left hand side and all your t should be on the right hand side. So look at the equation and set what you want. Right. Once you have already set it nicely, the next thing is to put them into the format of integration. Okay, you need to integrate both sides to get the answer. Okay, now, once you reach to this part, you have to decide because each of, when solving problem, even in real life, each step you take will determine your, uh, the future of the answer. Okay, so you have to make sure you choose the correct one. So for this question, you have to decide what, how are we going to integrate this? Okay, we have to decide carefully. So looking at the equation, I have x uh, when I expand it or when I have this question, you have to decide what you are going to do. Well, I'm going to do partial integration by partial. Okay, so I'm going to do partial fraction for this first. Okay, I'm going to create a partial fraction for this equation. So I will get a over x and b over 1000 minus x. If you have not seen the partial integrating of partial fraction uh, form, uh, video that I created, please help yourself. Okay. All right. Next thing that we are going to do, of course, we are going to solve the partial fraction and partial fraction, you learn it in semester one. So if you do not have and do not remember how to do it, you can go to my SAM1 uh, playlist and you can find the partial fraction videos there too. 
All right. So you will have the partial fraction there. And you will settle uh, by creating uh, and finding the value of A and B. So you will set in your equation doing the steps for partial fraction. Okay. And create your equation of a over x and b over 1000 minus x. You need to find your a and b. Once you found your a and the value of b, the next thing is to put it them back and rearranging them nicely into the question. Okay, now your integration question is basically ready. So once partial fraction is done, you will notice you will have the integration. I factorize the thousand out because there's so many of them. So I factorize them out. So I will have one over x plus one over thousand minus x. So with this, I have to decide what I need to do there. Okay, so I will need to set in. Okay, if I look at this one, oops, why is it jumping? All right, back to my slides. So I have one over x which means I can use the integration of ln to help me, all right? Over this side, I need to do some kind of adjustment because if I differentiate this one, I get negative x, but I have only one on top, okay? I Sorry, I differentiate this, I get negative one, but I only have one on top, which means I need to adjust my equation so that I need, uh, I can answer what I need. Okay, once that's done, Okay, once that's done, I can actually settle it in and then I can need to check into my question because I need to find clue for me to answer this part. Okay, I need to clear the part, the C over here, the constant. And of course the K, which I will be doing it later. Right, so now let's settle the C first. What is the clue that you can find inside the question? So I already uh, put up the question again. So the clue here is, right, the outbreak of flu begins at the time the infected trainee enrolls. That is a clue that I'm going to use to set in, which means if follow this question, when the person came in, then the outbreak started. Okay, so at t equals to zero, the there is only one person infected. Okay, so there is only one person. So I will use that as a clue to fill in and find my c. So I fill that in and I will get the value of c. Okay. Now, once this is done, I will get the value of c. Okay, always ask questions inside your brain when you are doing solving problem question. All right, so I get the C and I'm going to return the C back into the equation that I have here. Okay, let's put it back. Once it is done, the next thing is I need to settle with the K. So I need to change my equation into something that I can solve. So I bring the lawn all over together. And then I rearrange, so ln minus is divide, so ln x minus this whole set, so 1000 minus x will be divided, and plus is multiplied, so x and 999 will be put together. Okay, now that once I get the equation, the next thing is to set in. See, the next part of the question is they ask you to show that x. So which means I need to rearrange this equation until I get x equals to this element. So I need an exponent there. So which means this part here need to go. All right. So the exponent is uh, there when I uh, settle my lawn. So once I get this, it's time to rearrange everything into the correct position. Okay, let's rearrange. Okay, so I rearrange everything nicely and then I will pull the x over again. Okay, so this question, it has an x, uh, the k is still there, so I can still maintain the k. So I will rearrange until I get my x and voila, the x is out. Okay, so, and then remember to write the word shown. Okay, when this is done, right, do 
like hit like and do subscribe okay because like is a power up button for me it will motivate me to create more videos for you okay let's check out this next question okay of course you pause the video and try to read the question first okay so the rate of decay of this radioactive material is proportional to the mass of this material remain so in this question they gave you some clues but the equation is not given but they give you that the details uh, are proportional okay and to, for this type of question where there is no unknown or no representative given okay no nothing is given about the uh, representation of unknown so you have to write out as like this you have to write let the mass of the radioactive material at time you label all your unknown so that you can use it in your calculation okay so i will set in following the question they say proportional and they use the word decay the word decay actually telling you that it is a net that is a negative in the proportional okay so it's proportional decay means the element is getting less and less that's why there is a negative there all right so i will move on by creating the equation using the proportional statement that they give us once this is done i need to rearrange so i have dm over dt so i know my m is on the left hand side and my t is on this side okay once that is done i'm going to continue by going into the integration okay integrate both sides i can bring out the constant okay i can bring out the constant because i already mentioned the constant is k so i can bring out the constant and then i will integrate this equation all right so again another constant because all these elements are not mentioned inside the question all these unknown are not mentioned so i every time when i want to use it i have to mention if not the examiner do not know what representative are you using okay so with that i need to settle with the information so according to what i have there the say uh if at t equals to zero the material should be at the uh the mat the mass uh, material the radioactive material should remain the original one m zero okay it should be the original one m naught all right so we have that we put in the details and we calculate the a right we get rid of the one of the constant and then we take the equation and we put it back into our calculation so lm equals to negative kt plus lm naught then we have to go back to the question and we need to find more uh, clues to help us solve the question so according to what is given here if one third of the mass of the material is left after 12 years so which means the t that we are going to get in is 12 years and the mass uh, is one third of the mass all right the original mass so the next step is we are going to write t equals to 12 that is the years and then the mass is going to be one third of the original mass that is from the question okay once we have this information then we can calculate our k the unknown one more unknown which is left inside our inside our equation just now okay i'm going to move in uh, all these details and rearrange it nicely so i have that so i rearranged and i would need my k okay so now i get the answer will be k equals to ln 3 over 12 once i have this the next thing that i'm going to do is putting it back and then trying to answer the next part of the question okay so i rearrange first until i get the equation right so i will have the mass equals the original mass is this one remember the question say find the percentage of the material that will remain after 20 years so that is mainly our equation uh, the last part of the question so now that we calculated 
we try to arrange it into the correct position first okay we arrange uh, make sure you are good in your algebra because that is what we are going to do uh, rearranging until you get the values that you need okay the equation that you need so now i have my mess and i have to answer the last part of the question when t equals to 20. So I'm going to put it back into the equation and I will need to calculate the element. Okay, so now the mass that I have is 0 0.1603 of the original mass. Okay, unfortunately, they want it in percentage. So I have my answer is 0 0.1603. So I have to transform the equation into percentage to answer the last part of the question. So let's answer it. The percentage of the material left after 20 years is 16.03%. So I will take the answer I times with 100% and I will get what I need. Okay. So that's all from me today and I hope that all this can help you understand these questions better. Alright, i see you in my next video. Bye! Please hit the like button and do subscribe because it is free. And I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye! i see you again.